Hey guys, I am going to go ahead and do my week of books in review. Um, last weekend I started reading this book and I think I finished it Sunday or Monday, I think. Um, and it is Who Done It, which is conducted by John Ciaz or Sizka. I don't know how you say his name. Um, and then all the suspects are all of these well-known names that everybody, I'm sure, recognizes at least a few of those, as well as the ones on the back. Um, this book is like the coolest idea ever. Uh, a very nasty, mean, bad editor uh, has invited everybody to an old abandoned pickle factory. Like all of these authors and everything. Because he is going to, I guess, reveal something that's supposed to make everybody mad. Um, when they get to the pickle factory, they are informed by um, John, who conducted it, uh, informed by him that, you know, the reason why they were there was because, you know, the editor, Herman Mildew, invited all of them there and what he was going to do. But he said that wouldn't be happening because... Herman Mildew is dead. Herman Mildew was killed. And so all of the people who were invited have to give their account of the reason why they can't be the one who killed Herman Mildew. So there are some authors who say, you know, I can't be the murderer because there are some who say I killed Herman Mildew um and what else there's some who say you know I think there's like a couple that say that he was their father some of them say they were in a loving relationship with him like they were lovers um there was one who was like obsessed with him like romantically um, there's like all sorts of stories. It is a little repetitive, but you've got to understand, I think there's 80 some authors. I mean, so it's understandable that some of them are like repeats. Um, I mean, not everything is a repeat within a story, but some of it's repetitive. Like two of them say he's their father, that type of thing. Uh, I gave this a four out of five stars. It was really good. It's so stupid. It's funny. Like, you're reading it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so stupid. But I laughed the whole way through. It's really funny. Um, the reason why I gave it four out of five stars is I don't know what all the authors were told. Um, they were told a few things. I got that. A lot of them mentioned that he liked pickles. A lot of them mentioned that he liked cheese. Um... Some of them mentioned that he liked frogs. Uh, they were also told some items that were found that evening at the old abandoned pickle factory while everybody was there. Um, like, there's a one poison tipped umbrella. There's one suitcase full of poisonous tree frogs, you know, and so on. Um, which also causes a little repetitiveness within the story because... You know, there's a few people who mention that they have a suitcase full of poison tree frogs. It's not just one suitcase. So I almost think that maybe there should have been more information for the authors, you know, exactly what Herman Mildew looked like. Um, maybe they should have, like, put everybody's names in a hat and picked out one name, and this person can write the story about having a suitcase full of poison frogs. Like, I know that kind of dampens the creativityness because, or the creativeness, because um, that's telling them you have to include this in your story. But I feel like maybe they should have done that because it was, it was inconsistent. I know that's stupid to get, like, upset about, but it was, like, annoying because I'm like, there's already a suitcase full of frogs that's been found. And... There's only supposed to be one. So, I definitely think there was inconsistencies. I think it could have been done better. But overall, I just think this is like an awesome book. 
You try to figure out who done it. There's a big surprise at the end. Um, I just really enjoyed it. The next thing that I read was Daddy Long Legs by Gene Webster. And there is a foreword by Eva Ibbotson, or however you say her name. Um, I had heard about this a few months ago, this uh, book. And I thought, you know, I'm really going to give this a try. And, you know, I really liked it. I think I did give it four out of five stars. Um, it's the story of a young orphan. Her name is Judy Abbott, and she has lived at this orphanage her entire life. Um, I think she must have been found as a baby or something and taken to the orphanage because she has literally been there her entire life. Um, and when she gets to the age of, like, 16 or something, I think when they're 16 years old, they're supposed to be kind of let out on their own, you know, because I guess in that time era, that was considered the cutoff, but Judy is lucky because she is actually kept there, um, for two more years, so she, but she's sent off to a public high school where she can continue to go to school. She earns her keep at the orphanage by taking care of the younger children. So it's like she's got a job there at the orphanage. And then, um, I think maybe right before she graduates, she's called down to, I don't know, headmistress or something, I don't know what she was, to the office down there in the orphanage, and she's told that one of the men from the board of the orphanage, um... I guess he takes people or takes kids under his wings and sends them to college, but usually it's boys. Um, I guess he doesn't really like girls, I think. I don't know if that was ever really truly said except in Judy Abbott's mind, but I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, he has decided to take Judy under his wing and send her off to college. Um, he is going to pay for her education the only stipulation is that she write one letter a month to him. Um, she is not to expect any letters from him. Uh, he does not like letter writing or something. Uh, any communication that has to be done, because if the college would need to you know, contact them or anything, had to be done through his secretary. Uh, so there wasn't any supposed to be any contact between Judy and the man. And... So this story is actually written in letters to what she considers Daddy Long Legs. And I'm not even going to reveal why it's called Daddy Long Legs. I think that that is a good surprise for you guys to find out. Because I had no idea why it was called Daddy Long Legs. And I totally get it now. But, I mean, she, like, draws pictures for him and all of that. So it's cute. It's a very cute story. Um... I kind of had it figured out before the ending what was going on, but I really did like it. So definitely give this one a try, Daddy Long Legs. Uh, and it's just a little tiny book. It's not going to take you very long to read. So the next thing I did was Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple. And I think I gave this a four out of five stars. I honestly thought this was going to be better than it was because everybody has been talking about it. And I should have known better. But, you know, I have come across books where everybody's crazy about and I absolutely love them too. This one, I loved. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really liked it. But it didn't blow my mind. This is another book that's told, like, in letters and emails and memos and, and all of that. Um, Bernadette is a... 50-year-old or 50-some-year-old woman um, who has a husband and a daughter. The daughter is 15-year-old B. And Bernadette goes missing, okay? I expected her to go missing before she did because I was like, I think like t page 200 or something around there is where she finally disappears. Finally. So that's like over almost, well, yeah, it's over halfway. Yeah. That she finally goes missing. So pretty much up until page 200, it's just a story of building up to why she disappeared. I mean, honestly. 
I just kept thinking, come on, come on, I get all this, let's just go, let's have her disappear already. Because I thought, you know, maybe it's going to get, like, really good whenever she disappears. So, she does disappear, and then B has to figure out, you know, from all these letters and stuff, where did she go? Uh, it was really good, it's just, like I said, I expected it to be better. It's not, like, the most exciting book. To me, it wasn't. Um, I do think the story was good. I do think that it's heartwarming by the end of it all. Uh, it does take you through all sorts of emotions. I mean, there's times when you're angry. There's times when you're sad. There's times when you're happy. It's just, it does take you through a roller coaster of emotions. I do recommend it. I think it is a good book. I just don't want you to go in expecting that it's going to be like, blow your socks off good. Um, I don't really know what else to say about it because I don't want to describe anything more about the story because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. But it was really good. So four out of five stars. That's pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty good story. The last one that I finished up was A Daisy Dorimple Mystery, which is the Winter Garden Mystery by Corolla Dunn. And I gave this a three out of five stars. Actually, I haven't even given it yet. I finished it last night and I haven't rated it yet, but I'm going to give it a three out of five stars. It is a mystery that is placed in um, England in the 1920s. Uh, she goes to a friend's house to stay, and while she's there, a uh, one of the housemaids or something, somebody is found buried in the garden um, behind the house, in the winter garden behind the house, and she just went missing just like recently. So she goes and tries to figure out, well, actually, she helps the police <laughs> try to figure out who did it. Um, this is the second book. I mostly, these kind of mysteries you don't have to worry about. You can read them, and I, yeah, I didn't need the first book to figure this one out. The only problem was, and I kind of knew this was going to happen, is it kind of tells you... One of the suspects is okay from the first book, that he's really not the one who did it. So when I go back to read the first one, I'm going to know one of the suspects is totally not the guy who did it. So that might ruin the first book for me. Um, and this just wasn't as good as what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more exciting. It is a good book. I mean, it totally, you know, wraps up the story well and everything, but it just wasn't as exciting as what I thought it was going to be. And that's pretty much it. Three out of five stars. And so I did start Peach Girl by Miwa Yuda Yeda. I don't know. I decided to go ahead and start these because um, I have like the whole series. I wanted to go ahead and start them because I did order the anime. So I want to hurry up and read these now and watch the anime. I'm not very far along. I'm like on page 27. So not very far along at all. And I did. Oh, I meant to get the cover. I am so sorry, guys. I never even thought about it. Fins are forever. I totally forgot to pick up the dust jacket. Sorry, guys. Um, and this is by Tara Lynn Childs, I think is her name. Uh, I read the first book from the library, and I ordered the second book because my library doesn't have it. After I'm done with this, I'm going to give this book to the library so that they have the second book in the series. This is just a continuation of the story of Forgive My Fins, um, so I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I am not very far along. I think I'm on page, like, 22. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on page 22, so I'm not very far along at all. So that's it, and I'll see you guys later.